develop he can't even have a genuine convo without you starting to preach I feel like a yo Ooh, yo yo. <laughs> yo man this is the stuff i'm talking about what's up everybody how you doing welcome to the straw hat show where we'll be reacting to a brand new song today and i gotta say we're taking a turn in a different direction today it's been a while but we feel it's appropriate to take a turn in a different direction renegades don't worry about it but we have to get to some other artists and hopefully put you on to something really cool we are visiting the mind of one of our most influential artists of this generation at least we believe so joiner lucas and this is joiner lucas featuring jelly roll uh, a hip-hop country artist i believe who has just won a Grammy. You won a Grammy, right? Yeah, I think so. That's a very big deal, especially for independent artists. So this is a collab between the two. We've been fans of Joyner Lucas for a long time. He's an amazing artist. We love Joyner. Joyner Lucas is like your favorite rapper's favorite rapper. He is super diverse, all different types of sounds, and he makes a lot of these introspective type of songs that really come from somebody's POV or point of view. Um, I'm hoping he does it in this one. He's really good at it, and uh, I can't wait to see what he's got. This is Jordan Lucas featuring Jelly Roll, Best For Me. How can you love someone and learn to let them go? Oh, it's one of these. Right. How can we fall apart on things we'll never know? It's getting high up there. You hear that? Isn't it funny you can change your ways for someone to fill in your empty space? Tell me, is it really love if you have to ask if they'll stay? Yeah, I got somebody I love. Yeah. Someone who's really important to me, but now they addicted to drugs. Someone who's not who they used to be, and we ain't been keeping in touch. I ain't gonna say any names at all, cause I don't want no one to judge. But I wrote the song, I hope when they hear it, they'll never forget who they was. I hope you're feeling your spirit enough. I wanna just tell you I love you in case that you really don't hear it as much. I know we ain't talked in a while, but fuck it, I really don't care what it was. I wanna reach out, but you keep on shutting me down, and you ain't been caring as much. What the fuck happened to you? Mm. Wow. You know, I was reading uh, this book earlier today by Twyla Tharp. It's called The Creative Habit. And she was talking about two different types of creative people, right? Yeah. People who are, uh, I believe it was, uh, it was, it was Bio and Zoe, right? Or Zoe. And Zoe artists kind of cover topics from an overall uh, overview area, kind of giving you good feelings, good vibes. You don't know really where they're coming from. They're not getting too specific. They're just encompassing something beautiful, kind of like a song that's just vibey. You don't really know what it's about, but it's vibey. Mm. And then there's the bio artists, right? Uh, and bio comes from the root Greek word biography, mm. right? And these types of creatives get super detailed about what they're saying, and they're getting very specific about whatever it is they're trying to express to you. So I love how right away into the song, he talks about how he has a friend who's addicted to drugs, dictating the specific situation, showing characteristics of a bio creative. Oh, yeah. And that was just something I noticed, just some random interesting facts I read this morning and I just wanted to kind of talk about it because it just connected right away as soon as I saw that. He's not even like four bars deep and this is getting kind of deep. Well, when I first heard Jelly Roll, what I assume is the chorus, uh, I thought it was going to be like a love song about just letting somebody go that you're in love with. And are they really in love with you if you have to ask them if they love you back? Or if they'll stay. Or if they'll stay. Yeah. You know? And I understand. Yeah, I've had my heart broken in the past. I've gone through those feelings before. So I was gearing myself up to relate on that level. But this is some other next level shit. This is, you know, he just jumped straight into a relationship with somebody with a drug addiction and depicted in the videos beautifully Joyner is sitting on the floor with his I'm assuming his drug addicted homie passed out and probably from an overdose probably from an overdose and speaking from that perspective I love how he talks about I didn't I'm not really talking to you about it but hopefully you see this song and you'll know it's about you and as artists that is a very powerful motivation to write songs some of the most powerful and best songs we've ever wrote 
is when we've elicited a very strong emotion towards something, an event that occurred. You know, sometimes you have to fight roadblocks of creativity to write, but when you have a big emotion to back it up, it just flows through you. Usually when you make a song about somebody, you're in a situation where you feel like you've gotten past the point where you can talk to them about it. Now you feel the only way you can reach them is by making a song about it because songs are immortalized. They're, they're there forever. I mean, his homie's on the floor, questionably dead. So now he's worried about someone for their health and their life. And I agree with you. I think that artists, in a way, communicate through their songs. Maybe you're right. I never really thought about that. I guess the last resort when you've been talking to somebody is just to write a song because maybe they'll listen to it or at, it's just therapeutic for yourself. Yeah. You know, but let's keep listening to this. The host when they hear it, they'll never forget who they was. I hope you're feeling your spirit enough. I want to just tell you I love you in case that you really don't hear it as much. I know we ain't talked in a while, but fuck it, I really don't care what it was. I want to reach out, but you keep on shutting me down. Are you even caring as much? What the fuck happened to you? You losing a fight. I never thought I'd see the day that you let addiction ruin your life. Everyone calling that shit a disease and making you feel like you in the right. But I hate the fact that you really be using that as an excuse to do what you like or do what you might. So he's like, he's going on the on the fence. He's just, he's being super honest and super straight up as good friends should be. And whether he's right or wrong, you know, you should be honest with your friends. And he's saying, people say that this is a disease. And I don't like that because I think you're just using this as an excuse just to do what you want to do and binge out. You know, sounds like he's coming from a place of frustration, to be honest with you. I'm sure that he came from a place of empathy like this is a disease and whatnot. And you know, as many people know, you know, addiction can feel like a disease. Literally, when you try to stop doing what you're addicted to, you go through physical feelings and withdrawals. So it is kind of like a disease, you know, but I think he's past that empathetic point and he's just frustrated. And that's maybe he's lashing out in a frustrated way and he's like, I gotta just tell you. He's coming from a place of, of accountability. He's keeping his friend accountable for his own actions. He's saying, you can't just say this is an addiction and that's why I can't stop because he gives his friend more credit than that. He said it in, in the beginning of the, the last segment, you know, you're not who you were. I never thought I'd see the day when this would take over you because he holds his friend in high regards. So because he holds his friend in high regards, he's keeping him accountable to those standards and saying that why would you use the excuse that it's a disease, addiction's a disease, because I know you're stronger than that. Like you wouldn't right, but I hate the fact that you really be using that as an excuse to do what you like or do what you might. And I keep on praying to reach it for you. I hope you look in the mirror and see all the things I've been seeing in you. Hope your reflection will send you a message and show you this shit is much deeper than you. If you don't believe in yourself, then you'll never believe in somebody believing in you. When I gotta tell you the truth, cause I'm about to lose it. And you in denial about it and just wanna make up a million excuses. Tearing our family apart, but you leave a scar and everyone bruises. Every decision affecting us all. And if you get lost, then everyone loses. For real. Oh my God. Mm. So, you know, this, he, this, this might actually not just be a friend. It could be a family member. He said tearing our family apart. Or it could be someone that's close to the family. Maybe, or maybe just referring to a family circle, as a circle of a people. A circle of people. So yeah, he's saying this is, this is going way deeper than just your life. Because now, this can affect everybody else's life. I like this part he said, which was really dope. He said, how can people believe in you if you can't believe in yourself? Which is it's true, it's very powerful, you know? It's kind of like, I don't help, you can't help somebody who doesn't want to be helped, or you can't believe in somebody who doesn't want to believe in themselves. And you know, this often happens from our personal experience, right? When someone is addicted to a substance, you want to try to believe in them so much that they can get through it and you want the best for them and you give them all this advice and you give them the support but in the end they truly can't get over it unless they choose or they want to choose to get over it and that's pretty much what it seems like is happening with Joyner and his friend and uh yeah i think you're right i think the way he's speaking about his friend is he holds him in a very high regard and he's just like I'm just, I just can't believe this happened. I, I love the, the aesthetic of this whole video. The lighting is so beautiful. They are definitely using what they call motivated lighting. 
it's a video technique where um, the the light coming from the window is supposed to be the light source that's lighting the room, although that may not be the case. They probably have a bunch of lights in the room lighting up the subject, in this case being his friend, but they're making you believe that that light is coming from the window. Oh. That's the motivation. The light oh. is coming from the window and it's giving off like these like daybreak or like early morning type of lighting shots. I love the angles. I love that from below with the pills coming down and you see the guy's face. I just had to comment on it. Listen guys, what other reactors do you know are commenting on the music, the cinematography, the audio engineering? I don't know. We actually write, record, mix, master, shoot, edit, everything we do musically. It's pretty cool to see other artists and where they're coming from and break it down for you from all different angles. All different angles. All different angles. Straw Dynasty, baby. Let's, Let's go. go. Does every decision affect us all? And if you get lost, then everyone loses. For real. For real. And I'm gonna be next to leave. I know that guy got a plan and he ain't fulfilling your destiny. Much as I need you, I will not be sticking around or watching you rest in peace. I promise I love you, but I gotta do what's best for me. How can you love someone and learn to let them go? How can we fall apart on things we'll never know? Isn't it funny you can change your ways For someone to fill in your empty space Tell me is it really love If you have to ask if they'll stay Look, I know you've been calling for me You hit on my phone, but I've been alone so long I'm harder to reach I know you ain't saying any names But I got a feeling you talking to me I hate when these demons get in on my soul I feel like I'm caught in the beast I do I let go of something I know is bigger and stronger than me if I could be honest, I'll tell you the truth. I'm not who you want me to be. Nobody is perfect, not even you. So why you keep targeting me? I feel like we can't even have a genuine combo. What are you starting to preach? I feel like a Yo. Ooh, yo. Yo. <laughs> oh. yo, man. And this is the stuff I'm talking about that I said about Joyner in the, in the beginning of the video. Joyner is super getting into specific detail about the situation he's coming from both point of views, both perspectives from the person who is supporting the abuser and the addictor, is that a word? Addictor? Addictee? He's coming from his point of view right now and man, he just came in strong and he, he answered the comment that, or statement that Joyner made in the first verse, like, mm -hmm. oh, you know, I made this song, I hope that you hear it. And, he, and then he answers back like, I had a feeling that this song's about me. Mm. It's a very classic, this is a very classic joint of Lucas for those of you who've never seen him before. He's very good at coming from both perspectives in a certain situation, but on a technical level, he'll even bring it into like saying all the things from one perspective, kind of like in battle rap. The next perspective will address all those things. And not only will he address all those things, He'll probably do it in a similar flow or fashion and even use some similar words and reverse the scenario as if responding back to him. And sometimes you don't catch it, but it makes the song that much better because now it's super cohesive. For example, let's just say it's like a roommate who keeps taking somebody's food. And you're like, damn, dude, you keep taking my food. And then he goes to the roommate's perspective. He's like, damn, dude, you keep leaving your food. You know what I mean? Like maybe he's just seeing as like, you're leaving your food around, it's gonna go bad, so I'm gonna eat it. And this is a silly example, but you get what I'm saying. And the other guy's like, but he'll do it also in a similar flow, similar fashion, and even similar words reversed to really bring the song together. It's so mm -hmm. beautiful. Mm -hmm. and, and with the visual and the way he's crafting the song, he's providing a cinematic experience for you. Literally like listening to a song, but watching and listening to a movie and putting you in the world of what's happening. And it's just, it's masterful. Let's keep listening. Oh, I feel like I'm caught in the beast. How do I let go of something I know is bigger and stronger than me? If I could be honest, I'll tell you the truth. I'm not who you want me to be. Nobody is perfect, not even you. So why you keep targeting me? I feel like we can't even have a genuine convo. What are you starting to preach? I feel like a dog in a leash. It's not what I need. Living in hell, wondering when I gotta leave. Like, how can I breathe? How you gonna tell me addiction is not a disease? What do you mean? 
If it's not a disease, then why has it gotten to me? It's not what it seems. But you always be making me feel like the problem is me. I'm not gonna be who you want me to be. Like God decided for me. And speaking to God, how the fuck you know all of the plans he's got for me? So give me a break. I've been itching away from trying to get out of this dream. I'm drifting away. How come you only there for me when I be trying to get clean? My biggest mistake is me wishing that things were different. I'm Whoa. Whoa. This straight away addressing all the points as we had predicted that Jorner was saying before. You know, I can't be who you want me to be. How can you tell me addiction's not a disease? It's happening to me and I'm me, right? Whoa. Whereas Jorner was like, it's happening to you and you're you. So how could it be a disease? Where he's saying, exactly, it's me. I'm so on point that it has to be a disease if it's happening to me. Yeah. God damn. And he's just really coming from, he's really describing how tormented this man is, how the emotions and the torment he's going through battling his addiction and he's doing an amazing job at describing it uh how can i battle something that's bigger than me how do you know what god's plans are for me lots of doubt you hear doubt in his voice you hear defeat you hear all these things that people who are going through addiction go through man he's just he's doing it beautifully he's He's getting me a little emotional right now. I'm not mm. gonna lie. You know, I, I've been through this situation one time before. Maybe he's pulling up old emotions. Maybe he's just that good at describing what's happening or evicting an emotion. The pressure of the situation is making him say things and feel things that a lot of people would feel when somebody is trying to help them or whatever. Mm. He sees it as they're hounding them. Feel like a dog on a leash, feeling like he's being judged, feeling like He's being clocked, he's being watched, waiting for him to do something so they can call him out on it. And he feels attacked. This line, he snuck it in there. Mm. He said, how come you're only around when I'm trying to get clean? Oh, insinuating Ins that. Insinuating that like- You're never you're, there. You're not there for me in the heat of when I need you. You're just there for me when I'm trying to get clean because it seems like you only want to be around in that period and you're only interested in me being clean. That was like the, that was the transition to mm. you're hounding me. In our friendship, you're just really never there. Mm. And now that I got this problem, all of a sudden you're there. Where were you when I was just normal? How come you only there for me when I be trying to get clean? My biggest mistake is me wishing that things were different. I felt like the drugs is made for sinning. That's why I've been stuck in the same position. Fuck. I'm falling, but I cannot budge. Been wondering why I'm in love with a strange addiction. And why the fuck you always playing a victim? A lot of this shit that you hate to miss. It sucks that I had a taint of vision But ain't nothing left for me So you can just quit addressing me I guess it's just my destiny So take me as I am Or let me be Tired of you stressing me Cause shit I gotta do is best for me How can you love someone And learn to let them go How can He ended that first part I gotta do what's best for me Like maybe I gotta like Push myself away from you mm -hmm. And then from his perspective He's like I'm trapped in this I'm going through this I gotta do what's best for me You know he's ending Basically each verse With the phrase Best for me It's like two different perspectives On what's best for somebody In mm. this particular Situation scenario. scenario And we fall apart On things we we'll never know Isn't it funny You can change your ways For someone to fill in your empty space Tell me is it really love If you have to ask if they stay How can you love someone and learn to let them go How can we fall apart On things we'll never know Isn't it funny you can change your ways For someone to fill in your empty space Tell me is it really love If you have to ask if they stay Directed by Joyner, ooh. If you or someone you know needs help with addiction, text best for me to phone number. We stand by that message and we approve. Yeah, so anyone watching this, if you know anyone who needs help with addiction, test, text best for me to this phone number. I can only assume that it'll lead you to a place where they can get some help or you can get some help. Wow, I gotta say, man, Jordan Lucas, this guy has come a long way. This guy's come a long way since when we just First start listening to him just kill bars. Believe me, he can kill bars. These stories and these perspective shifts, how can you, how, it's funny how you can change your ways for somebody to fill an empty space. What a powerful line. Has so many different ways to look at it. What I like about it is that whether it's this scenario 
that's going on with a drug addicted friend, or whether it is heartbreak or something else, that line, that one line is relatable to so many different people in so many different scenarios. So very good songwriting. And man, Jelly Roll, that boy can sing, man. Sounding like a, a mixture of Fergie and Jesus. Your voice is like a combination of Fergie and Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> For real though. It really sounds like a nice, light, sweet tone to that difficult situation of a song to listen mm. to. He kind of lightens up the mood. I think his voice kind of represents a sense of uh, slight hope, but really going through pain. Like pain mm -hmm. that is seeking for hope. I think that's what it is. Pain seeking for hope. Musically, the way they chose to go about it with the beat. So Joyner Lucas and people like Joyner, people like Eminem, people like who are very based lyrically based artists. artists. They have very simple beats. This was a very simple beat, simple chord progression. In a lot of the song, he's actually just, just taking away the snare, taking mm -hmm. up the snare, further giving you that feeling of space, further helping you to really zone in or hone in on the lyrics, really listen to what the song is about. And I really like that because I feel like in the music today, there's a lot of overproduction. There's a lot of people trying to do too much. They're trying to get a hit here. They're trying to get a hit there. Oh, this is a banger. You know what I mean? I really appreciate, especially good lyricists, when they could jump on a beat and the beat can provide the space for the artist to be a painter and paint the canvas. That is their song. A canvas to paint on. Maybe you might feel the beat is lacking and it doesn't have it's maybe it's missing some type of drums or melodies that could go with it when you have a lyricist of this caliber he's there to fill in the rest joiner lucas featuring jelly roll best for me that is top notch rapping storytelling perspective shifts overall cinematic experience i really enjoyed it i i have nothing else to say except i hope joiner lucas makes another song very soon. And I hope he gets the credit he deserves. I mean, he's already got a huge fan base. I hope he gets some of that mainstream recognition that he deserves because not only is he making amazing music, it's incredibly high level. The production is incredibly high level. Mm -hmm. This song in particular is positive in a sense where it's made to maybe inspire someone or help someone in a tough situation. And this song is art. And that's just who they need to be uh, representing in the Grammys. Stop with this BS, man. Stop giving Grammys to people like Cardi B. Stop it. Stop giving Grammys to people who promote things that poison people's minds instead of enrich them. I, I just don't understand it. Yeah, man. Like, the Grammys, like the highest level of music. Give it to someone who is an artist. I mean, I feel like the Grammys, they never get it right because I don't think they come from a hip hop background. I don't know who's making those decisions. I think they're kind of like, oh, this girl, this guy. People are talking about this guy or this girl. Maybe there should be like a whole new award ceremony for real artists. Maybe there is and we do don't know have, about do it. Do they have hip hop Grammys? I don't know. Hey, let us know in the comments below if there is an award ceremony for maybe independent artists. Or is there a hip hop Grammys? Jordan Lucas consistently earning his stripes. He's always doing songs with like big time artists who have Grammy. Mm -hmm. like Jelly Roll, he has an entire project with Chris Brown. Eminem. Eminem. Crazy. The, the, the list just goes on J. and on. J. Cole. J. Cole. Although J. Cole doesn't have a Grammy, I think. <laughs> Which makes no, no sense. sense. Twin sense. Let us know what you thought of the video. If you found any value from this, please like the video, comment, subscribe. We will be covering all different types of artists. We will be covering some of your favorite artists. And uh, let us know who you want us to cover next in the comments. And check out our music sometime because you'll probably like it. I'm Trix the Hooligan. And I'm Jules the Buddha Monk. And we are Straw Hat Dynasty. Your favorite rapping. Breaking. Twins from NYC. Peace. Peace.